I'm so excited to have you today on the podcast, Omar. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from Colorado. Col I have been excited about this interview. And if you can, Omar, tell us a little bit about your background. Who's Omar Lopez? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's an honor to be on here. And to be quite honest with you, sometimes I forget uh, that part of my life, right? Um, obviously, something, a miracle happened, a, a something super, super dramatic. But to answer your specific question, who's Omar Lopez? Um, I think I'm just a, a, a simple human being who um, loves God and loves people. Um, I don't, I think we all have different gifts. And I think one of my gift, gifts is to simply love people regardless of their, of their story. As a matter of fact, I, I need to know their story to encourage me. But that's, that's who I am. I'm, I've learned to, to not judge people and, and to have grace um, the same way God's had grace on my life. And man, it's made my life so much easier. And I've made so much, many friends, you know, just living that simple life. So that's who I am. Um, just a, a kid from Los Angeles, California, um, who by the grace of God, God's allowed me to be successful in my career here in Colorado. Business has been good. And I'm, and I'm grateful for, for that opportunity um, because one of the things I love to do is, is to give, but I can't give if I don't have, right? So it's allowed me to be able to give in, in areas that I never thought I would be able to. Wow, that's so awesome. I do remember how generous you are. You were one of the first people to talk to me yeah. when we were in Bible school. And uh, so tell me about how you got into the U.S. Army? Yeah, I was, uh, again, um, grew up without a, without a father, a kid from L.A., typical punk, right, football <laughs> jock. And I knew that I needed some discipline in my life. So mm -hmm. I joined the Army when I was uh, just turned 19. This was before 9-11. Get out of boot camp, and then 9-11 happened. Um, mm -hmm. So we were one of the first to get deployed. We invaded Iraq in 2003, uh, the beginning of 2003. Um, I thought it was going to be like a video game that I played growing up. Um, but I quickly learned that war is not something that nobody wants to go through. I know it's easier said than done. But if you've been to war, you get it. You do mm -hmm. things. You see things that you would never imagine. Um, I think that we all suffer from post-traumatic syndrome in some sort of way, but I choose to, to take those experiences and uh, allow it to make me stronger and just really appreciate life and, and, and every season of my life. As we'll learn in this, in this interview, it wasn't just uh, peaches and cream. I was out there for about seven months doing things I never thought I would. And on November 2nd, 2003, I uh, was going on a mission, Shiloh. I was going to, uh, to Baghdad and uh, two helicopters pick us up, okay? This is I, in the Middle East, right, for those that don't know. Yeah, in Iraq, um, I was at the Syrian border because the, they were letting a lot of terrorists from Syria across the border. So yeah. I was in Iraq. Um, we were in war, and uh, we were going on the mission. They pick us up in two helicopters. I get on the first helicopter, and then the rest get on the second. We take off, um, and we were in Chinooks. Chinooks are the, the helicopters that have two, two helicopter propellers. They kind of look like a banana. There's 36 of us in that helicopter, fully loaded, okay? Wow. And as we're going to Baghdad... Um, I hear a loud sound and um, I recognize that we were hit by a missile and we start wow. spinning out. And before I could think another thought, they shot another missile and hit us again. Well, it so happened that the second missile hit on top of where I was sitting. The impact threw me out of the helicopter um, about roughly about 300 feet and I landed in a farm. 36 of us. 20 died. I don't remember 
falling out of the helicopter. I remember spinning and, and going down. And I, in that moment, I remember thinking, if I'm not dreaming, I'm dead, you know? I woke up about 20, 20 minutes later um, because I passed out. And uh, I began to, to smell fuel. And, and, and I just remember hearing other people screaming. Um, and I thought, man, this is real. This, I'm not, I'm not Shiloh. I'm not dreaming. This is, <laughs> this is going down. And I thought to myself, oh, this is how, I guess this is it. I never thought I was going to die in Iraq. I never thought this was how my story was going to end. Okay, this is it, right? Um, but they found me under some rubble. Um, and, uh, and then I went into a coma for about eight days. Um, when I woke up out of a coma, I was already in, in D.C., Washington, D.C., and the doctors uh, reminded me of what happened. But when I, say they, I, when I say they reminded me, I felt like they were telling me everything that I would not be able to do for the rest of my life. So I broke both of my feet. I broke both of my hips, my right mm -hmm. arm, my right shoulder, and I fractured my neck. You got to remember, I was at that time, I think I was about 20 years old. I played sports my whole life. Um, but they told me I would never be able to run again. They told me I would have to be um, dependent on a cane for the rest of my life. Truth be told, Shiloh, I was upset. I was bitter at God um, because I thought, I, I mean, I may as well be dead. There's, I mean, there's no way. I'm 20 years old and I can't walk or, or, or run. Um, I was, I was confused to be quite honest with you, because I thought like, how could God let this happen? Right. Um, and that was the beginning of my, of my new journey. 